I recently was able to uh, read some of this book by Gregory Coles called Single Gay Christian. I got to write a small forward in there in the front. Uh, you see, it's super important for me to be able to read resources from LGBTQ community uh, brothers and sisters who uh, wrestle with their sexual identities and their love for God and how those things work together. And I think it's always helpful to have more information. I also think it's really sad that the Christian community would often write off someone like Greg uh, before they even get a chance to hear his story, yet they're meant to be a community of people that are the most gracious, kind, loving, and slow to speak and quick to listen. So church, we got to do better at listening, at understanding, um, and hearing people's struggles, their pains, their hardships, the things that they navigate in order that we could be compassionate and show the love of Jesus uh, who ultimately offers hope to everyone. So I actually have a really interesting story. You might have seen uh, Lecrae tweet about it yesterday. Um, it's so interesting and timely that this happened uh, in spite of everything that's happened in, in the evangelical community, making this sort of united front against uh, homosexual marriage. So yesterday, Lecrae was in New York City for promo runs, and we decided to, uh, I decided to take him for a walk around my neighborhood. I showed him uh, you know, where I live, and uh, he asked about the Bronx, and I said, the Bronx is really close. Let's walk there. And so we started walking to the Bronx. As we're crossing the bridge from Manhattan to the Bronx, we notice out the corner of our eye uh, what looked to be a woman crossing the street heading uh, towards our direction with her breasts out and half naked. And Lecrae looks at me and said, what's going on? I said, it's New York, let it happen. So there's these large pillars on the bridge um, and we see this woman come and all of a sudden we hear this loud thud and we, we didn't know what it was. And we see her come out from around the pillar and she had just bumped her head and she's gushing blood from her face. So this person's about five feet in front of us now, blood rushing down her face, and she starts to climb over the guardrail to jump. Um, and Lecrae reaches his long seven foot arms and grabs her and says no and pulls her back and I start grabbing her. So as we start wrestling this woman off of the bridge, uh, we start hearing her scream out, I just wanna go home, I just wanna be with Jesus, I don't wanna live anymore. And me and Lecrae, you know, are in a bit of shock, we're in a bit of panic, and we're also now starting to have a Jesus combo. So Lecrae starts saying, you know, we're, we're re literally, this person is strong. They're trying to jump off of the bridge, and we're both wrestling her down. She's like, no, I just want to be with Jesus, and me and Lecrae are going back for, no, you matter. Like, you're meant to be here. You're already home. Jesus loves you. So at this point, uh, I'm really close. Uh, we're both really close to this person, and that's when I noticed that it was actually a wig that they had on, and it looked like they had um, a like a surgery, like a transgender person uh, that was originally a male and was becoming a woman. Now, I say that because it's actually important to the story um, and not to ridicule them or, or any of that. It was simply to say that this was a transgender person uh, who seemed to be deeply distraught but also had a love for Jesus. Uh, so we're wrestling her off the bridge, and I say, hey, call the call the police. And so this person calls the cops. There was another person that was watching. And so the police finally come, and they start to help us pull her off of the bridge and start wrestling her down to the ground. Uh, now when we finally get her to the ground, or when the police finally get her to the ground, um, you know, she's still resisting and taking about five or six police officers. And so one police officer runs over, and he starts saying, get the f on the ground, you know, and he starts screaming and yelling at this person. And I had a quick moment there where I realized, yo, this police officer is rushing into a situation that he has no context for. And um, he doesn't know that this person was suicidal. They're trying to just kill themselves and they need compassion. He's seeing resistance and is meeting it with brute force. And so at that moment, I started to realize this is how police encounters can escalate so quickly is that often a, a police officer can rush in with fear. Uh, and without context and without compassion and situations can escalate very quickly because of it. That gave me a newfound compassion for uh, both sides. Uh, one for the people that are uh, being dealt with by cops and for police officers that are coming into hostile situations without context and uh, feel an extreme amount of fear. But anyway, that's a sidebar. Uh, they finally detain the woman and the police officers look at us and they go, man, you guys saved her life. You know, you guys ever think about becoming police officers? And I say, no, I have a successful rap career. And then he laughed at me and said, take my card. So there's more to the story, but the big idea here is, uh, you know, Lecrae, because he wanted to go on a hood adventure, ended up, uh, we didn't even make it to the Bronx, just on the bridge to cross the Bronx. And I said, you know, the Bronx came to you. And so, you know, now we have a story. 
So me and Lecrae walk away from the situation. We're trying to process everything that just happened because it was completely insane what we just experienced. And uh, these were some of the things that I processed. And this is very important to the first post that I made about the single gay Christian. Having friends who are gay and who have grown up with uh, struggling with their sexual identity, um, there is a ton of ridicule and misunderstanding and hatred spewed out towards people that deal with that, particularly particularly and sadly even from uh, the people who are meant to be the most gracious and loving and uh, accepting you as you are, which uh, is the church. And so I needed to make this statement, uh, particularly after running into this incident last night. This person um, had a love for God. And I know some of you would say, oh, well, they were suicidal, so they couldn't love God, which is completely idiotic. Uh, people go through really difficult and traumatizing seasons in their life. Uh, even myself, I've gone through seasons of depression and, um, and pain and stress that have uh, made me have suicidal thoughts. And it's not, and I love God, and it's not uncommon that people would wrestle with stuff like this. Now, I can only imagine being a sexual minority the way that this person was, being transgender, uh, but also loving God and having uh, extreme turmoil in the body that they live in, wanting or desiring suicide. What it means to be a Christian is to come to a place of saying, I completely understand that I am broken, I'm sinful, I'm wicked at heart, and uh, God has no reason to love me, yet he does and dies in my place for my sin through Jesus. What that should mean for us is that we would live a life with a confident humility, meaning I'm confident that God loves me, but I'm completely humbled by the fact that I don't deserve his love, and therefore I can't be judgmental or hateful towards anyone else. So for those who uh, see this you know, book or this story as a, an opportunity to be critical or condemning of those people that have been hurting the, the, the man that I mentioned in this book, Greg Coles, or the woman on the bridge, I got something special for you. If you can be critical and judgmental of hurting people, I have to truly wonder if you're even a Christian. Uh, and it's sad that oftentimes uh, you guys are the ones that get the most face time for Christianity, which gives a terrible name for all of us. Second, the people that I see Jesus actually spazzing the most on and pointing a finger and condemning at in the Bible actually isn't the hurting and broken and messed up people. It's actually the self-righteous people who want to point and judge others. Jesus says, come as you are, just as you are, broken, hurt, wicked, sinful, and come and let me love you and heal you. And that's the type of love that melts a heart, not the condemning, finger pointing. Uh, that Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount, uh, he says, what you have done to the least of these you have done to me. Meaning our capacity or quote unquote love for God cannot surpass the amount of love we have for the least of these in our society. Let me explain. The people that you look down on the most in society, whoever it be, whether it be homeless people or homosexual people or whoever, what Jesus is saying is there is how much you love them is how much you love God. And so I would ask you, who uh, do you not understand or condemn or look down on? Those are the people that you need to draw the closest to and love uh, that your love for God may actually grow because all that lip service doesn't mean anything to God. After all that, that was to say this, that there are people in this world that you might look down on, that you might condemn, uh, often out of your own ignorance and lack of compassion and love for God. And um, I think God is calling us to understand and love the hurting people of this world. So if you got anything to say about my endorsement of this book, uh, which is encouraging people to read it to understand the, the struggle of what it means to be a single gay Christian in the world, completely unfollow me right now. Goodbye, good riddance, peace to you. Before we can speak, we must listen, especially to those who have been marginalized, pushed aside, and undervalued. This book serves as an opportunity to do just that, to hear from a man who knows and loves Jesus and wrestles honestly with himself and God. Listen to him, hear his story, enter into another perspective, a narrative that is often untold. That's my endorsement for Single Gay Christian. I love y'all, man. Uh, I pray that we all continue to grow into being more like Jesus.